go. All right. And that's the end of our presentation. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so again, decentralized storage network, that's what we're building. And uh, I'm Mark Collier, and this is Polina. Hey. And uh, if you want to go to the next slide. Of course. Here <laughs> and we, uh, we also have a, a number of team members that couldn't make it here today. Uh, they have actually been toiling away building the solution while we've been here having all the fun. Uh, although we may have one of them pop up here in a minute as a last minute guest who just arrived this morning. But when I talk to a lot of my friends about what is keeping them up at night, one of the things that I always hear is people are always worried about, you know, central banks, right? You've probably heard this before. Next slide. Sure. So the central banks, that keeps other people up at night. That doesn't keep me up at night, control of money. Eh, someone else's problem to worry about. What keeps me up at night are central clouds. And this is a real problem because if you look at all the amazing decentralized apps that people are building here this week and been building for years, way too many of them run on central clouds, run on AWS, Azure. All this data that's being generated ends up on S3. And we think that that's not a great, a great uh, answer, right? If you're gonna have decentralization but every one of those apps is ultimately dependent on one or two clouds somewhere in the world, they can cut off your access. That's not very decentralized, actually. Cloud and Amazon in particular is one of the greatest forces of centralization in the history of technology. So we want to do something about that. And if you just to put it in perspective for a minute, Amazon's revenue last year was over half a trillion dollars, which is more than these 70 countries' GDP combined. So you know some of these uh, countries have been to the World Cup. Some of them probably even won the World Cup, but. If you look at the perspective here, Amazon is just massive. And one of the reasons why we have to be working on solutions to make this problem better is because all of you, all of us, we're generating more data all the time. And a couple of years from now, we're gonna be having um, 180 zettabytes of data just generated from all the apps, all the activity, all the things that we're building. And that's just gonna keep ending up on S3 if we don't build something better. And so we want to build monopoly resistant storage. You hear a lot about censorship resistance and civil resistance. It's all important, but if we're not monopoly resistant, we're ultimately never going to get out of this centralization hell that we're stuck in. And there are, of course, other storage solutions out there that haven't gotten as much traction as we would like. And so we've been looking at that, trying to understand that better so we can figure out what we can build to address this problem and actually provide an alternative to the monopolists and the oligopolists. And as an example, some of the other storage networks that are decentralized, they've built a very big footprint, but the, the actual adoption on those, uh, those footprints is less than 5%. So we've been really taking a close look at why is it that even decentralized developers keep picking S3, keep picking AWS. And Polina's gonna talk a little bit about what we've found. Uh, so, yeah, based on our research and user interviews, what's currently lacking in a lot of decentralized storage options are the four fundamentals of storage, not like one or two of them, but they are all together. Failing to have all four leads to poor development experience, and that's pretty much the reason why people keep on using Amazon or any other Web2 solutions, because it has four. And uh, having four pretty much means to have performance, it means fast reads and writes, but also resilience to avoid data loss or transfer interference. I don't performance mean while I'm talking. To, right performance, now. I already said. And most importantly, availability okay. to actually be able to both read and write at pretty any time needed. So having those for fundamentals nailed makes sense, and after that it makes sense to add a blockchain layer on top of it to kind of unite of both worlds. And that's what we're trying to do here with On Machina. We use near blockchain under the hood, and it enables users to have uh, ledger immutability, decentralization, uh, open source, and also transparency uh, to, yeah, actually it enables us to creates, um, most importantly, an incentive for those data centers who used to previously uh, compete, compete with each other, now they can cooperate. And yeah, that's the approach that we build with On Machina. We build storage first, blockchain second, adding the best of two worlds together. And we also try to not jeopardize the user experience because our goal here is to build not only the performance storage, but also the one that is simple to use because simplicity is the key. 
And what we're targeting here is to build it as simple as possible. So just uh, five HTTP words. It's uh, get, put, post, head, delete. And maybe a little bit of documentation to show you what parameters you have to put in it. But that's pretty much it. And yeah, we're secured by NIR blockchain. We love NIR as NIR provides a decentralized, federated, public, private key infrastructure that we're about to use in this product. And yeah, actually, NIR will allow this million people who have NIR accounts already, they ac can access on Machina through NIR. And this is how we get to this privacy of data and owning your own identity kind of narrative. And yeah, if you have a NIR account, you have on Machina. And how about we jump in and try to do that demo right now? All right. So I believe uh, Jonathan Bryce, our co-founder, is going to join us. He, uh, he got on a 5 a.m. flight this morning so he could make it. So I'm glad you're here. And uh, show us about the demo. All right. Thanks for, uh, for having me join you. Let's, uh, I'm going to stand on this side, actually. OK. It will be tricky. I think OK. So um, what, what we're going to run through here is uh, a very, very simple web app that we built as kind of a sample to show what you can build on top of this simple API. Um, an important thing to remember is that simple uh, can be very powerful. And, uh, and simple is, is a great way to build fundamental infrastructure, because then you let everyone else put it together to build what they need. So this is um, a, uh, a demo app that we built. And you'll see Polina is logging in here with her near testnet account. All right. um, looks like this process that you see everywhere requests some limited permissions. When she connects, this uh, signs a transaction, gets a key that is stored locally on her browser, and then uh, is used to authenticate against the On Machina Decentralized Storage Network API. So why don't you go ahead and create a container here? This is kind of like a, a folder. La container. La container. Sweet. OK. It's so there. It's there now. Um, let's upload some. Do you have any cute dog pics? Of I know you course. have a cute dog. <laughs> I have the cutest dog there is. Let's take a look at it. Look, it's there. OK. Sweet. All right, so Here's very simple. Um, you know, This is basically a, a very simple kind of web-based file browser that we've put together here that's built on top of, of this API. But as I was saying, you know, simple can be powerful. So let's drop into the command line here and, uh, and show a little bit of what, uh, what's possible with if you just start putting some of these HTTP requests together, this very yeah. simple REST API. Why don't we go ahead and list your account first? Um, yes, yeah. this one. And there we go. Just to, to see that we are, uh, we're talking to the same <laughs> network. There we so go. So now, now uh, Polina has put the near CLI on her laptop. So she has a different key for this. One of the things that I love about this, this decentralized, federated, public private key infrastructure through near is such a rich and awesome um, identity model for all kinds of applications. And it, to me, it's like so much better than, than other blockchain options out there. And so she has a key on her laptop. She has a key in this browser now. She can go revoke those through her near account. Um, so it's great power and security and control in the user. But you can also start to put these together. So it looks like you've got a, a little shell script here that uh, yep. has an iterator, and it's going to zero index 10 container puts. And uh, so why don't you run that? And yep, let's do that. OK, and what this is doing is this, you know, just command line scripting here. It's running a bunch of uh, REST commands. Maybe we uh, just go back up and, and look at our, look. our account again. Now we have 10 containers. We can we start can to put. We can actually check it out here, too. Look at yeah. that. We need to reload, though. <laughs> all right, reload there this, we and go. we see this here. So different interfaces, all stateless, all talking against this API. You can see it's very fast. Um, and, uh, and you can keep continue to build these together. So one, uh, one example that, in my background, uh, running data centers, we're always managing logs. And we're managing transaction data. And you're rolling that up, and you're archiving it, and you're, you're zipping it, and you're moving it around. And so we've created a, a, a kind of a sample archive here that has 1,000 text files in there. Um, and it's going to drop those into a few containers here. Now, um, we're doing this over my phone because we couldn't get the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the network functioning up here. So it, it might take a little longer than, uh, than ideal. But we'll, we'll see some activity happening still in, in a second. Oh, yeah. um, if we go back to the presentation, then this, this diagram shows the way that this is set up. You know, there's 
a, a storage shard out there. And right now we have one that is a testnet shard uh, that has this simple API on top of it. All of the authentication and security around that is through those interactions with the near blockchain. And because of that, these shards are immediately federated. Those shards can grow across different data center providers, across different node operators. The security lives in the near blockchain. So this is um, already a really awesome, powerful setup. And then again, because of that, because of that decentralization, that federation, the near account model, and this clean API, you can build very uh, powerful apps on top of it, simply to using these REST commands. Yeah. And, and the sample app that we have today, it's a it's, stateless it's UI, a it's a client-side browser app, this. it downloads a set of JavaScript files. But All of the interactions this. from that point yeah, yeah, are between yeah, this laptop and the back-end storage network secured by Nier. So this isn't going through a web server. The web server never sees her keys. The web server never sees her data. All of this is happening directly in, in that communication. So um, let's go back to the maybe the, the, uh, the web app and see if we've got some, some files in there. We reload this screen again. Or yeah, go look in the. Yeah, and so scroll down. Yeah. I mean, while we're talking, we've uploaded hundreds to thousands of, of log files. <laughs> yeah, can't even see them all. So, um, you know, this very simple kind of example of what you can do with this type of infrastructure. Again, get put, get put, post, head, delete, five verbs, build great apps. And I'll hand it back to Mark to wrap it up here. It finishes up the last bunch of objects right now, as you can see. Yeah, I think uh, S3 was originally the simple storage service, and people were really drawn to that when it was started, and it's become a lot more complex, so we're bringing simple back. But simple is powerful, and it's beautiful, if I do say so myself. So we have a really easy to use, cool API, very clear documentation. Um, the UI we showed you was this JavaScript that's stateless, so that it, it remains on your machine at all times, but there are many ways you can build your own app using that same technology and, and inter integrating with our APIs. You can even put the UI itself on Machina, so a little inception there. And uh, again, if you have a near account, on Machina was built for you. And what happens next? Apply for private beta access. So yes. we're actually looking for lots of feedback, and we're open to everyone. Come and try it out. It's closed, though. So this is basically leads to our website with a form where you can sign up. And yeah, we're looking for your feedback, looking for your use cases. Please, please sign up. But please remember as well that it is only a testnet. So we're looking for feedback so we actually can build a really, really good production network that everybody's happy with. Very simple, very nice. But yeah, uh, sign up, follow us. What's next? Yeah, so this testnet that we've built, we're going to continue to expand it, make it bigger, more regions so that the testing can be even more robust. But next in the roadmap is really decentralizing node operations. So we are looking for people that want to operate nodes. That'll be happening later this year. And we really want to keep onboarding more and more developers to help us build it. This, you know, building monopoly resistant storage is going to take like a lot of a lot of help and a lot of input. And whether you're a node operator, developer, or just an app developer that wants to use it, we want to hear from you and get involved so we make sure we, we build the right kind of storage. And then once we have a big footprint around the world, we're actually going to be able to geofence your data. So if you have data that needs to stay in Germany or Singapore or Brazil or whatever your requirements are, you'll be able to do that with On Machina. So that's a little bit of a peek into our roadmap. Right. Help so, us uh, build <laughs> monopoly resistant storage. QR code once again, if you didn't catch it. Yeah, did we forget something? Yeah. So you can follow us on Machina. You can go to the onmachina.io website or hit this QR code. We also have this limited edition on Machina t-shirt. If anybody's interested, come find us after the talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.